I will buy this game. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to a survival atmospheric pixel horror uh, published by Devolver Digital called Noct. It's absol absolutely awesome. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start a game, and I'll see what it do. You locate the survivor, and then e Xmit Transmit is like, Hey, the last survivor I was helping didn't make it. You need to go loot his corpse. Receiver's like, that's fucked up. Yes, it is, but also this is a new world we're living in. Uh, you're surveying the world from a satellite plane, so... It slowly rotates the entire world as you are uh, traversing, which definitely adds to the uh, off-putting nature of the game. The soundtrack is relatively good. Lots of ominous tones, but uh, they serve their purpose well. Let's see if I can get some rifle ammo. All I've got is a pistol at the moment. Ah, rifle. Yes. Number pad to switch, and... It says, uh-oh, I don't know where this fucking thing is. They usually just lurk outside the door, so it's like, ah, I hate it. I wish you could see out the door, like the door is quite obviously open. I don't know, we'll go out this way. Okay, all right, good. We might have swooped him for, <laughs> for the moment. I really like the, uh, the the graphics as well as the music uh, it's got that pixely deliciousness but there's a good reason for it uh, there's some food mm. and there's yeah since you're viewing the world from a satellite it's it makes pretty good sense that it's monochrome and pixelated and it looks really really good all things considered, I know there's a fucking thing out there. <laughs> God damn it. What I hate the most. I've given the controls for Noct. Are you out here? <laughs> I've given the controls an 8 out of 10. They're really good for both the, uh, the keyboard or a controller. Uh, there's lots of, lots of buttons to learn and they're all basically applied because you can pick up grenades and special items and stuff like that. Hopefully that'll apply a little more as the story gets developed. This is currently a beta access copy. Uh, but pretty cool that they were willing to put it out before release date. And, uh, I'm definitely appreciative of that. So, the controls, yeah, 8 out of 10. The fun factor I also gave an 8 out of 10. I really like the, the chills and thrills that this game gives me uh, as I'm trying to keep my little man alive. <laughs> you gotta really want it if you're, if you're planning on living in this game. And there's another thing. Every time he says, uh-oh, it's just like fucking terror mode. There's one. Get the fuck away! Ugh. Okay, we reloaded the rifle. Not great on rifle ammo, but it'll do for now. I think maybe that guy fucked off. Maybe. Uh-oh. No more uh-oh. Fuck you, bro! Alright, we're low on ammo. I gotta fucking go. There is food and water that you're able to find. You need lots of water to be able to sprint, which uh, is... <laughs> Not even that fast, but it's basically the only way to get away from the the baddies that are lurking everywhere. Uh, health is also a thing in the lower right, F, W, and H, but I haven't found much use for the health meter, <laughs> because usually you just die in one hit. So, interesting choice. It definitely looks cool. I'll give them that. Uh-huh. I'm so scared to go outside. Difficulty is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> it, it makes you jump at shadows, basically. Just because my guy said, uh-oh, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna go outside. There's nothing out there. Everything's fucking fine. <laughs> the difficulty I've given a 10 out of 10. Yes, this game is significantly hard. Especially if you're planning on living for any length of time. 
I'm gonna head to the east because there seems to be some buildings over there. But yeah, the world spins, so it's kind of hard to keep track of. Replayability I'm a little bit skeptical about. Uh, I gave it a 5 out of 10 just because even after the story I find myself still wanting to scavenge ruins and such. There is uh, a bit of a story currently about going to a dam, putting it back together. Ooh, a grenade. Don't mind if I do. Excellent. And uh, innovation, I've given an 8 out of 10. This game, I mean, I've seen an atmospheric survival pixel horror before. You know, uh, I reviewed one before with Uncanny Valley. If you'd like to check that out, links in the description. <laughs> and uh, I think this, this game does it right. You know, Uncanny Valley had some blemishes, but um, yeah, this top-down stuff really kind of fixes the problems that I had with Uncanny Valley, and now I've reached the ocean. Okay, fine, let's go north. We'll have a little chit-chat. Uh, the aesthetic's really amazing. I talked about it a little bit already, but the graphics are definitely a 9 out of 10. It is extremely low res, and I've knocked pixel games for being super low res before, but this is a game from a satellite. Like, it's, it's such a simple fix, such a simple solution, but it serves to immerse you that much more. Uh, I assume that we're supposed to be the, tran the transmitter guy, and we're just, like, controlling random survivors until they die. <laughs> it's kind of morbid, but apparently we're going to save the world somehow, some way. Maybe. It's like it's like the original Fallout. You gotta fix the, the dam and whatever, get the water, something, powers. <laughs> Not making any sense. Uh, the music I've given an 8 out of 10. I, it serves its purpose extremely well, but it is just uh, a series of tones. It's not something that I particularly enjoy. If you like ambient music, it's probably right up your alley. But uh, for me, it's not something I'd put on my iPod. Definitely not perfect, uh, but serviceable. Serviceable indeed. Sound effects I've given a 9 out of 10. I really like them. Uh, even though you're surveying this action from a plane or whatever, you still feel like you're killing stuff pretty good. The, the rifle has a nice kick to it, and you can see the shells and everything, which is really awesome. Goes back to the graphics. I'm super impressed by this game, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> the sound effects, 9 out of 10. Uh, story I've given a 6 out of 10. Currently it's undeveloped, but I am extremely intrigued by it. Um, the story took me currently about, like, an hour to complete, but that's just because there's a lot of dying. I actually only completed about three or four ob objectives, um, which one every 15 minutes isn't bad, I guess, but not not as good as I'd like. I, I usually expect myself to work a bit faster, so I was a little uh, surprised at the difficulty of this game, but it is extremely good, and the story interests me in a, in a way that... Uh, you know, generally a game can't. <laughs> There's very few games that are able to tell a good story. It's a very important aspect to a game, and uh, probably an extremely underrated one at that, but in my book it's extremely important. So I'm impressed by the story here. I would love to see some more, and uh, I will buy this game since the beta key will eventually run out. Uh, I'll throw some money at it for sure. I'm super impressed. The level design, it is extremely expansive. There's not a ton of stuff uh, to see, really. Lots of burned out buildings to explore, which I think is pretty cool. The level design I've given a 9 out of 10. Um, basically because a lot of it is vacant, <laughs> I've, give, I've taken off a point. But it, it's a huge world. It's not randomly generated, but the world is absolutely gigantic in itself. So exploring it will take some time. I definitely like uh, the random occurrences of monsters. You never necessarily know when you're going to encounter them. Sometimes you enter a house and then it's monster time and they're probably lurking outside the door, which I've been lucky enough not to experience just yet. <clears throat> so the total for Noct is 
80 out of 100, which is a solid 4 out of 5 stars. I really, really like what has been done with this game. There are a little, a few blemishes, you know, but I think those are things that'll be patched up relatively quickly. Yeah, kill that spider. Damn. I'm glad it wasn't a big one. Um, yeah, because it's a beta key, it's hard to tell uh, whether the story's worth playing through or not, but from what I'm able to uh, surmise thus far, it is. You know, it's something that I want to continue playing and get humanity back on track. Yeah, killing worms, all kinds of shit. What you want to do? Bring it. Oh, fuck me. Oh, shit. We're out of... We're out of, we're out of, we're out of, there's a grenade. Grenade didn't work. We gotta run. Oh, fuck! Oh. <laughs> Definitely a game worth trying if you're into uh, atmospheric survival horror type things. Um, if you want to see a little bit more of an in-depth analysis, there is a text review also uh, hosted on IndieGameBundles.com. And I hope you'll check that out as well, if it looks like a game that you maybe are on the fence about. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. This has been Knocked and Another Dayton Dissects. I hope you did enjoy, and if you did, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. And until the next time, friends, bye bye One, two, three, four... Goodbye, goodbye, see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends